Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna give my thoughts on uh, GitHub Copilot. So I recently got to use that. I've been waiting for a while. You have to get on a, a waiting list to be able to try it out. And for those of you that don't know, like GitHub is the website that pretty much everybody puts their code in. I would say it's mostly open source, but these days there's a lot of like for-profit companies uh, that are using GitHub itself, the platform itself, to actually host all of their internal code. So there's a lot of private code on uh, GitHub as well. We've really become reliant on it, you know, just as much as like Stack Overflow or something like that. Uh, but I just want to give my thoughts on like what I think of it. And I've only been using it for a few weeks, but I got to say like going back to like using IntelliSense and then Microsoft came out with IntelliCode and Microsoft bought GitHub, so they actually own GitHub too. But uh, they had this thing IntelliCode that came out a couple of years ago and it was using artificial intelligence instead of like as you type and it gives you suggestions, it was using artificial intelligence to give the suggestions. I found it to be like pretty much the same thing as IntelliSense. So I, I couldn't really tell too much of a difference between using IntelliCode uh, and IntelliSense. But having used now GitHub Copilot for a couple of weeks, I gotta say like it's definitely the most impressive like pair programming coding suggestion software I've ever seen. And I, I've been a pretty big doubter of artificial intelligence and the buzzword behind it. Uh, but I got to admit, you know, with the massive amount of processing power that is out there, there's no doubt, and I've always said that what we call artificial intelligence is really pattern matching machine learning. And the way that we're doing it these days is definitely, it's quite impressive. It's better than, you know, than, more, you know, even really what I, where I thought we would be, you know, a couple, you know, a couple years, I guess a decade into this, um, this new hype. We had um, you know, sort of a revolution, I feel like, with artificial intelligence, and there was a lot of buzz and everything going on about, about that. Uh, but with GitHub Go Copilot, it's simply using all the code that is available on GitHub, which is pretty much most projects these days. And it's using that to suggest what sort of code completion you should use. And what I find completely different compared to like IntelliCode is that as I'm typing, it's giving like entire code blocks of suggestions. So not just like, you know, call this, uh, you know, th this particular function, or you might be calling this function or whatever, or you could pass in these arguments as a default or something. This thing's giving entire like classes. They're almost like templates, right? Like uh, we have like code snippets and templates and a lot of people, um, they save those snippets because they know that they need to use them over and over again. And with GitHub Copilot, I find that it's actually suggesting entire like chunks of code that you know it doesn't always work it feels like half the time it'll work for what you're trying to do but when it does work it's like damn that that works really well and it really does suggest other ways that you could write your code and sometimes i feel like it, you know in the, the short time i've been using it it's like wow i never would have thought of writing it that way and um it, i think it's honestly like an actual tool that's going to help me be a better programmer so will it replace our jobs? A lot of people on YouTube were talking about this will be like uh, the, the job killer for coders and all that. And it's definitely not that. And I think honestly, we're probably at least a decade or more from that. And everybody that thinks like, oh yeah, you could just be a coder without actually knowing how to code. It really seems kind of stupid. I think it, it seems like a stupid argument, I'm not saying people are stupid, but uh, it just sounds really stupid to me. It's like, even with GitHub Copilot and as good as it is, it's not actually like telling you exactly how to solve the problem. You still have to know how to code to utilize the suggestions properly. Now, one of the biggest problems with GitHub Copilot though, is it's actually collecting all the code that is out there on GitHub, probably public and private. I don't really know if it's collecting the private code, but anything that's public, it's collecting and that's what it's using to analyze and try to figure out what it is that you're trying to do. The biggest problem with that is that I don't know that like there's any sort of legal precedent that says whether or not Microsoft slash GitHub is actually allowed to do this because there's you know free and open source software, but they come with different licenses like GPL, don't be a dick license, um, MIT, obviously. There, there are a lot of different licenses out there and they're very specific about how you can share that code and that you have to give attribution to it and all that stuff. So what people think is AI, it's like, oh, this, you know, AI, this bot, you know, this general intelligence is somehow figuring out what you're trying to write, but it's actually humans. 
So it's pattern matching based on what humans wrote. And to me, that's not really like, you know, that's not an AI, that's not general intelligence in any way whatsoever, but it is providing good autocomplete based on what previous humans have written. So what are gonna be the legal implications of that going forward? If we're gonna start writing a bunch of our code using GitHub you know, Copilot, is there eventually going to be a situation where that code may not be legal to use because it was ripped off and proper attribution and all that wasn't given? It's impossible to say, and it's not going to be on the end user, I don't think. So anybody that's uh, using GitHub Copilot, you would think there's going to be like no way to tie you back to, okay, I used you know, somebody else's code because really you didn't. You didn't rip it off on purpose. You're just simply using this code editor enhancer. And um, you know, basically, what are the legal ramifications going to be from that? I think the, the jury is still out, so we'll, we'll see. In my opinion, it's so broad and you still have to be a coder to implement it that I think that if it goes to like the Supreme Court in the United States, I think they'll probably rule in favor of it being like fair use. So it's quite the interesting argument, really. Code is all just ones and zeros, uh, machine language, virtual machines, compilers, interpreters. And we copy and paste code all the time from Stack Overflow, or maybe you figure out how to solve a bug on GitHub and is that copyrighted or not? Who knows? Like, we're not actually copying code verbatim. You're still having to write code. Uh, and I think really the arguments, it, it's, you know, that it's stealing code is probably not valid. So another thing too is that the code completion itself is actually better for languages that have more code out there. So if you're using JavaScript or TypeScript, you're going to have better suggestions than probably something like Rust. Uh, or Haskell or OCaml or something like that because there's just less code for it to work with to know what it is that you're trying to do. So all this said, I do think that GitHub Copilot is simply just another tool. I mean, we used to code with like Notepad++ and um, now we got much better editors, IntelliCode, linting tools, testing tools, uh, compilers are better. Everything's just getting better, but even though the tools are getting better, writing code is still hard to do, mostly because it's not just simply about writing code. It's actually writing code in large organizations, distributing that code, maintaining it, and uh, trying to make sense of that whole process. So it's not like you know we have any sort of artificial intelligence at this point that's really going to like, okay, I want to design a website, and then it's going to magically just you know build your back end or front end for you. We're really far from that, so I wouldn't worry about it taking our jobs. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast, to the point, without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now, professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.